Hey horror fans, welcome back to Room 237, come at you with another review. And I'm actually taking a break from uh, Universal uh, Mummy series. Because uh, I bought this last weekend, it's a horror film from the 60s that I've heard about, didn't really know too much about, but sounded very interesting. And I found it kind of cheap, it's, it's also a Synapse release, so I found it as cheap as I did. And uh, it's sort of a cult film, and supposedly it is the first horror film to come out of Brazil, which was in 1964, and that is, uh, and forgive me for pronouncing this wrong, because I know I will, uh, uh, Ho Jose, Jose Mojica Marins. At midnight, I, I'll take your soul. Now, this is part one to a trilogy. There's also uh, This Night, I'll Possess Your Corpse. And then, more recently, like in 2008, he did uh, the third part, which is Embodiment of Evil. And down in Brazil, uh, 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 Jose, Jose Mojica Marins, excuse me, he's sort of considered like the Brazilian John Waters, like the guy of just weirdo cult movies. And this character, although he's not specifically called it, at least not in this film, this is the only one I've seen, character of Coffin Joe, who is like a horror icon down in Brazil. I mean... He may not be a household name to us, but down there, he's he's like their Freddy Krueger. Or Jason Voorhees, or, you know, someone like that. And this was a very interesting film, to say the least. Um, it's shot in black and white. Again, 1964. This, this kind of reminded me of that period throughout the 60s with these just really, whether it be first-time directors, which I believe this was, just making these very original, uh, their own style, black and white horror films. Like, uh, I can't remember on top of my... It might be in here. Give me one second. Uh, Carnival of Souls, which I I have reviewed. Uh, ah, Carnival of Souls, uh, uh, Herc Harvey, which I I only pulled this because this movie I'm talking about is in here, and I just picked this up last weekend, and I've been in love with this book ever since. I will show you what it is in a minute. Because I know it's in here. I just got to find the damn thing. Oniba. Okay. Or it's not. 101 horror films you must see before you die. I I will make a video about this. Just going over like what's in it. But this was a, gr a great little read. I found it for like 12 bucks. And I love books like this. So I, I thought this was in it. I was going to say something about it. But never mind. Uh, so, but also, like I was saying, Carnival of Souls, but also George Romero's Night of Living Dead. Two years after Carnival of Souls, four years before Night of Living Dead, just that really raw, uh, directorial debut, very original, very culty horror film. I, I would lump this in with those. But like the uh, Brazilian one. And the real, I guess the only plot would be uh, this guy, Coffin Joe, as he's called. Well, actually, the character's name, if I dare pronounce it, is he's also played by the director. I'm just going to call him Jose because I'm just going to keep 
I'm butchering the hell out of his name. Ugh, of course. Zay Do. Fuck it. He's coughing Joe. <laughs> but yeah, so he he wrote this with two other people whose names I'm not going to bother pronouncing. Starred in it and directed it. And it's in a unnamed Brazilian town. Uh, Coffin Joe is an undertaker who many people believe that he's a Satanist or a, a devil worshiper. But he disbelieves all, like, a, a religions of all kind. It's kind of a, I would almost say like punk kind of film in a sense of how like a, a rebellious it is. There's even a point where someone comments on, like, you know, your disbelief is like a rebellion. Like, there's a scene in the beginning where his girlfriend, he he asks for meat, and she says, it's, it's Lent, it's the holy day. And he says, I will eat meat today, even if it's human flesh. And he goes down to this place, and he has this big, like, leg of lamb. He's just eating it in front of people on this holy day. And, you know, he just scoffs at all religions. He talks about, you know, believing in a symbol built by a false god uh, of ignorance. And it does sort of have this, have this punky, rebellious feel. But this movie is really raw. I mean, okay, is this a Serbian film? No. Or like Human Centipede 2 or Snuff 102? Obviously not. But there is a way you can do what's kind of tame, but the way you shoot it, the way it's filmed and, and shot, it can be more effective. The way it's stylized can be more effective than, say, a Serbian film. Because this movie opens up with this gypsy warning you not to watch this movie. And then you get these awesome opening credits. Which, when it shows you the cast, it shows the scene in which they get killed. They're like freeze frames with these really great, like, just horror font, uh, almost like creep show font looking titles. And then it gets like all animated, it goes off the screen. It's got like this weird filter, almost kind of makes it look like a gritty uh, music video. Love the opening credits. Really love the opening credits. I, I thought that was awesome. Really sets the mood and tone for the film. But like, the first what it shows is this woman who, you know, bloody face and being like slapped and beaten. And it looks believable. Because again, this was, this was made in Brazil, so... They were doing stuff that they could not get away with here. Especially with even just the uh, a mocking of a religion, definitely. I mean, this was nine years after like the that doctor wrote uh, a seduction of, of the innocent. Like that caused like the uh, comics code authority and all this violence and terrible shit like uh desensitizing youth and you know uh, uh alan ginsburg being arrested in the 50s there was still all that kind of stuff still going on in the early 60s it was right before fucking flower power and all the hippies and but anyway it was so coffin joe almost 10 minutes in i'm not even into the fucking plot yet he, he's an undertaker, and he believes that the ultimate goal in life is to have a son to... It's the continuity of your blood, the continuity of your existence. But his girlfriend cannot have a child, and it's him just getting rid of people in his life so he can achieve something else. Like, his girlfriend, it's kind of sad really because she's like hugging him saying you make me so happy I love you I want to make you feel so good he chloroforms her 
ties her down on the bed, puts this big nasty ass spider on her, and you know she has like gauze in her mouth, and he's saying like you are suffering because you can't scream, and it's implied that the spider bites her, and he's like oh the the throes of death, you dance before me, and all this stuff. He's really sadistic. I mean. It might be considered tame by what's out now. Especially for films that are trying to be disturbing. But he really is a fucking sadist. And, you know, he... Uh, I like the look of him. He's got this top hat. This, like, coat. This, like, Jack the Ripper coat. Which has, like, really slim-fitting black sleeves. And his nails aren't quite like that, but he does have, like, long, pointy, white nails. So, you know, when he's doing, like, this stuff, he looks like Nosferatu. He drowns his best friend after clubbing him, after they're talking about religion, because he wants his girlfriend. And his girlfriend's the one that he fucking slaps and beats. And kind of like in... Carnival of Souls and Night of Living Dead. Like, Night of Living Dead when the uh, girl has the gardening tool stabbing the mother. It's like that uh, high-pitched shrieking sound. Like, it's music, but it's ominous and distorted and weird. It's kind of like that when he's slapping her, but it looks convincing. And, you know, you see him with those long nails, and he rapes her. And she says, you know, you've ruined me, I'm going to kill myself. And he just doesn't care. He just wants to plant his seed to carry on his blood. And, of course, all this shit's going on. I think people kind of suspect it's him. She does kill herself. I know I'm giving all this away. I should have said spoilers, but this was just a pretty original movie, I have to say. I mean, the only thing that really goes this far, again, he's not a Satanist. He he disbelieves all, all things related to religion, even Satan. He just like welcomes the idea because it's shocking. Like, someone says something about the devil, and he says, you know, if if I bump into the devil, I'll invite him over for dinner, and shit like that. And he sort of has, like, this rock kind of way of acting with his eyebrows. And I just lost my fucking train of thought. I don't, that's what I get for trying to do eyebrows, but... This sound... Oh, but, like, all what people think about, like, Satanists and trying to make shocking stuff, the only thing I could think of today, and even though they barely count as movies, and I have the first and the third one, would be, like, a Lucifer Valentine's Vomit Gore trilogy, which barely counts as anything. I'm not reviewing those anytime soon. I have them as a curiosity sake burnt them on a, a, a DVD-Rs years ago, along with August Underground. I'll review August Underground before Vomit Gore Trilogy. <laughs> Fucking nose again. <clears throat> and basically, the gypsy we see in the beginning foretold that he's going to suffer the horrors of hell and his friends are doomed for death. And it all just builds up to a climax where he kind of gets his comeuppance. Which, I mean, knowing now that this is the first part of a trilogy, he's got to come back somehow, even with how he looks at the end of this. Which, I like the look of the apparitions. Because, you know, it's, it's like the Day of the Dead, and he thinks he sees the devil... He runs away because he knows he can't stop it. He ends up at the mausoleum his friends were buried at. And he wants to see that they're still dead. 
So he opens them up and like their eyes are all like bulged open so they look alive. Which there's this other guy that he kills with his nails and when there is gore, it looks it looks pretty damn good for like uh, the budget they had, which I don't know what this translates into American dollars uh, of the time. It doesn't even say. So, okay. But even in the beginning, like, in this little tavern, like, he cuts a guy's fingers off on the table. He beats up another guy, and nobody says anything. Like, everyone's just afraid of him. They all know he's the Undertaker. But, uh... Yeah, at... Kind of like Carnival of Souls. It all builds up to that ending where, you know, it's like the ghouls, zombies, ghosts, whatever they are, chasing the actress all through the carnival. And it's all surreal and weird. You get weird angles. It's like that. Like, we see the apparitions of his two friends. It, like, switches into, like, film negative and flashes and superimposed with the sky really you know sort of going for it almost like Sam Raimi I would probably say like the Sam Raimi of the 60s because like when he beats the hell out of the guy in the tavern he stands on the bar and the camera's like looking up at him and you just see his foot kind of go like that so you do get some inventive different raw camera angles that's pretty much what I can say about this film, is that it's really raw. It's got this authenticity. It really reminded me of... It's like if you take Carnival of Souls and, it, like, Night of Living Dead, take that period of film, the black and white, the low-budget, really uh, unique style of filmmaking with whatever you want to call this, just a really sadistic, death-obsessed guy. I'm very interested in seeing what else, like, what the other ones are. The, uh, This Night I'll, I'll Possess Your Corpse and Embodiment of Evil. Uh, this comes with a 10-minute making of, uh, a couple... Uh, uh, interviews with the director. You get an introduction of the film by the character Coffin Joe himself. And, I mean, it has a 67 on Rotten Tomatoes, so it, it is a cult film. You don't really hear too many people talking about it, but I actually really enjoyed it. It was different. I haven't seen this kind of villain before. Loved the style of filmmaking. It only comes with uh, a Portuguese audio. When I watch a foreign film, I like to watch it in its native language anyway. There were some parts, like with the gypsy in the opening, I wondered if they shot like they do in, in uh, of Italy, where they shoot and then they add the audio because it wasn't um, syncing up perfectly. But I really liked this. The, the, again, the word raw, authentic cinematography. The performances did bother me. I, I rarely see an issue with uh, foreign performances. This was a different kind of character. Sort of like Freddy Krueger if he dressed like Jack the Ripper and just killed anybody he wanted to. Loved the way it was shot. Loved the ominous, weird score. Like the Chainsaw Massacre kind of sound effect score. The gore effects when they were there worked. I thought they looked well. The scenes that were supposed to be brutal, sadistic, and violent. They were stylized in a way that still, even compared to today, they still seemed brutal and violent and harsh. So I thought it stood the test of time. But I really enjoyed At Midnight 
uh, at midnight I'll take your soul. I keep forgetting which one is take and which one is possess, but at midnight I'll take your soul. 1964, thank you for watching.